Thank you, Doug. Hosni, who will speak to, uh, to us on um, eczema laser with uh, corneal crosslinking. So, hello. The, the purpose of, of my, this talk of mine is to try to build a, a case uh, in favor of combining crosslinking with LASIK in selected uh, patients. What we uh, call LASIK extra, there are two. Uh, very respectable camps. One of them is totally against combining cross-linking with any refractive procedure. And the other one, uh, which I belong to, is uh, I'm one of the believers that cross-linking can benefit the outcomes of lamellar refractive surgery in selected patients. So John Marshall has, has the very famous slide that we all know and has estimated that LASIK may weaken the cornea by 15 to 25 percent. In the vast majority of cases, this does not lead to corneal ectasia. If guidelines are strictly followed, and we all know that guidelines are being more and more tight by the day, and if you abide by the guidelines, most probably you will be home and dry, but sometimes patients slip through your fingers and end up with an ectatic condition. So cornea cross-linking has shown evidence-based reliability in strengthening the cornea. So the concept of combining both procedures from a safety and efficacy point of view is of great in, uh, interest. The indications of LASIK extra in my practice, all patients that I will do LASIK for, if they are under 20 years of age, from 18 to 20, I don't do LASIK um, uh, in patients under 18 years of age. Patients under 25, if they have myopia of more than minus six, if they have astigmatism more than 2.5 diopters, or if the axis uh, of oblique cylinders not symmetrical in both eyes. In hyperopic patients, and I will tell you exactly why do I do this in hyperopic patients and in flap relifts, which I um, um, mentioned earlier in, in this morning's talk. So LASIK extra in hyperopia, why? Mild regression of hyperopia after LASIK happens in 30%. We all know this uh, uh, under the age of 30. This has been always attributed to unmasking of latent hypermetropia due to the post-operative relaxation of the ciliary muscle, and this has raised the issue of whether to do uh, treat the cycloplegic refraction uh, like the preference of Dr. Shafi or uh, only the manifest refraction somewhere in between. So um, actually it all depends upon the age of the patient, but recently it has been shown that progressive flattening of the cornea has been observed by serial topography. And th this has been attributed to many things, the stimulus of which is the apex of the cornea, which becomes a little bit more um, steep. And, and uh, the, the dryness on the tip of the cornea stimulates the epithelium to remodel. So if the cause of regression is or is assisted by post-operative change in the corneal shape, including um, corneal epithelium and stroma, then locking the ablation with cross-linking uh, can be of help. Um, in a study performed by Canalopoulos back in 2012 comparing hyperopic corrections with and without intraoperative cross-linking, it was found that the LASIK extra group experienced half the amount of regression that was experienced in the LASIK-only uh, uh, patients, and this was a two-year follow-up. So we all know that the regression after hyperopic uh, LASIK usually happens within the first three to six months. So um, Cosmo Mazotta has, has studied a lot the effect of uh, corneal cross-linking in LASIK action, has, has found that there is definitely a demarcation line, and there is def we, we all know now the value of the demarcation line is a little bit questioned, and, and the, it only tells you the, the layer where the, um, the great apoptosis of keratocytes uh, happened. But again, the rest of the corneal collagen uh, sometimes is cross-linked well beyond and much deeper than the um, um, demarcation line. So it has been shown by OCTs that there is a demarcation line in these patients that you've done cross-linking during the, uh, the LASIK procedure. So something is going on and actually uh, you have strengthened the cornea to some extent. Now this all, all, was, was, all was perfectly uh, logical until the Roski study happened from the University of Southern California and was published and it negated the value of adding any cross-linking to our uh, LASIK procedures. And, and so everyone, everyone at the time thought that doing LASIK extra was bad and was, uh, was, not, was not beneficial for the patients, was just an extra step. But when you go back to, to take a look at the Roski study, it was 11 porcine eyes, 
and they were evaluated by uh, Brion Microscopy Ex Vivo. So this this is really not a landmark study that we could that we can change our beliefs according to. And the the Roski study, sorry. The Roski study showed that by Brion microscopy, the, the, ad, the addition of cross-linking to the patients that had a flab did not increase the biomechanics of the cornea as evident by the Brion shift. So we decided to take things into our hands and we did um, um, research. It was a master's degree at Cairo University and we randomized trial including 40 eyes of 20 patients who fulfilled the inclusion criteria. It's jumping without me. Okay. Um, each group had 12 myopic eyes and 8 hyperopic eyes. The OCT findings were, were really, were really uh, coherent with the results of Cosmo Mazotta. We did have a demarcation line in all patients. The, the flap edge and the interface between the flap and the residual stromal bed was extremely enhanced in the patients that had um, uh, that had a LASIK extra. We didn't have any problems like DLKs or any form of inflammation. The results, the, the post-operative results and rehab was very, very smooth. And actually the demarcation line stayed until three months post-operative, but this was the maximum follow-up period in this study and we, we published this. So I think in conclusion, we have been abiding by LASIK guidelines over the years but some of our patients developed ectasia in spite of us being, you know, uh, coherent with the guidelines. We're still abiding by the guidelines which became more limiting and more tight. How can we be sure that the guidelines of today will not become even more limiting in the future and some patients will uh, slip through our fingers again? So in order to avoid the occasional slipping of one of our patients into ectasia, we have suggested a clear set of indications for employing LASIK extra. The procedure is easy, it's rapid, it's safe, it doesn't, it doesn't delay you, it doesn't uh, increase the length of the, of the procedure. It's reassuring and can be implemented in a busy practice without impeding uh, patients' turnover. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hisney, and it's